If you have experience with the design of structural elements using different materials, using different standards and resources, you may have seen how the design standards, such as the American Institute of Industrial Construction and the American Concrete Institute, use the terms require strength, allowable strength, and design strength, which at times can be very confusing, especially when you're designing different structural elements using both of these standards in the same design task. Today, I'll go over the definitions of these terms and any key differences between them. All right, welcome back to the new Access. My name is Wilson Raposo Olianik, and I'm a structure engineer based in Southern California. If you're new to this channel, welcome. I hope that you find value in this video, and if you do, please consider subscribing for other similar content. Now, let's go over these definitions. The use of these terms is dependent on which design philosophy is being used. One good example of this is a steel column supported by a concrete spread footing. Generally speaking, the steel column, the base plate, and the anchor bolts, or anchors, would be designed using the provisions of AISC, American Institute of Steel Construction, which allows for the design of these elements using both ASD, allowable strength design, and LRFD, load and resistance factor design. However, the spread footing, which most likely be designed using ACI, American Concrete Institute provisions, is required to be designed and analyzed using the LRFD design philosophy. This is an instance where if you were designing all of these structural elements in the same design task, the terms require strength, allowable strength, and design strength will be present in the same task. Let's take a closer look. One key word that they have in common, these terms, is the word strength. If we type into Google the definition of strength, one key definition that pops up is the capacity of an object or substance to withstand great force or pressure. That is common for all of us in general, but it's even more relevant for structural engineers. Structural engineers are always talking about how strong a beam is, how strong a column is to resist a particular force or pressure. Therefore, the word strength on itself does not really tell us any key definition about these three terms. Which brings me to the key differences. Looking at required strength, the first part of the term is the word required. The required strength can be defined as the maximum internal forces in a member and establishes a minimum strength or capacity that a member must have in order to safely withstand the stresses, the forces, and the deformation that a member is experiencing. Another way to look at the definition of required strength is by thinking of them as the demand of the forces being produced in a structural element. However, the required strength itself varies depending on which design philosophy is being used. Let's put this into perspective. A simply supported steel beam of span L, uniform distributed load of W, will experience a maximum moment, bending moment of WL squared over eight. Let's use some numbers. Let's say that the beam resists a uniform delt load of 1.5 kips per foot and a uniform live load of 3 kips per foot and has a span of 10 feet. If we're looking at the ASD design philosophy, the governing load combination per AIC would just be the summation of delt load and live load. Therefore, the total uniform load on the beam would just be 4.5 kips per foot. Looking at the maximum service moment in the member, which would occur at the mid span, will have a value of WL square over 8, in this case equals to 56.25 kip feet. Therefore, the demand or the required strength for this beam to safely withstand the produced mid-span moment will be equal to 56.25 kip feet using the ASD design philosophy. Similarly, we can take a look at the LRFD design philosophy. In this case, the governing load combination for LRFD will be 1.2 dot load plus 1.6 live load, which corresponds to a total factor uniform load of 6.6 .6 kips per foot. Therefore, the maximum demand or required strength for this member under the LRFD design philosophy will be 82.5 kip feet. As you can see, the term required strength can be used for both ASD and LRFD design philosophies. However, their values are not the same. Now let's look into allowable and design strength. Allowable strength and design strength are considered available strength, available strength. But what is an available strength? The available strength of a member is a function of the nominal strength of the member along with some strength reduction factors applied. Nominal strength can be defined as the capacity of a member to resist the producing turn of forces in the member. Therefore, looking at required strength, which will be the force demand in the member, Nominal strength is simply the capacity or the ability of the member to resist such demand. The nominal strength of the element is a function of the member's material properties, suction properties, overall geometry, and overall stability of the member. 
Let's put this into perspective. AIC 360 section F2 tells us that the nominal flexural strength MN shall be the lower value obtained according to the limit states of yielding and lateral torsion buckling for a doubly symmetric compact I beam. Looking at the yielding limit state, the flexural nominal strength of the member is the product of the yielding stress of the material times the plastic section modulus, which are material and sectional properties respectively. How is this relevant to available strength and design strength? Each of the design standards do not allow engineers or designers to rely completely on the total nominal strength of the member. This is because the nominal strength of the member is highly dependent on the action material properties and the way that it was built, both of which are subject to uncertainty and error and are variables that are beyond our control as designers. Therefore, each of the design standards direct us as designers to reduce the nominal strength capacity of a member to an available strength via the use of some strength reduction factors. And these factors depend on the design philosophy that is being used, the type of force that the element is being designed for, as well as other properties. For instance, looking at the available flexural strength of an I-beam per AIC 360 section F1, for ASD, the allowable strength is simply the nominal strength divided by the factor omega B, which equals 1.67. Therefore, for ASD, the available strength is actually approximately 40% smaller than the actual nominal flexural strength to account for uncertainties and carry out safety measures and design. And this available strength is actually called allowable flexural strength. The keyword allowable is added when the members analyze and design using ASC design philosophy. In the case of LRFD, the available flexural strength is simply the nominal flexural strength multiplied by the factor VB, which equals 0.9. Therefore, the available flexural strength is 10% smaller than the actual nominal flexural strength for LRFD and is called design strength. The keyword design is added when the member is being analyzed and designed using the LRFD provisions. Lastly, let's bring this into perspective. Looking at our earlier example, the moment demand in the section is called required strength. Its available strength in ASD is called allowable flexural strength and is simply the nominal flexural strength MN divided by the factor omega B. And in the case of LRFD, the available strength is called design strength and it's simply the nominal flexural strength MN multiplied by the factor phi B. This brings us to the end of this video. I hope that you find value in this video. And if you do, please consider subscribing for this channel for other similar content. Hit the like button, leave a comment down below. Let us know what type of videos you would like to watch. Lastly, please make sure to follow us on Instagram at the Neutral Access blog and check in our website, theneutralaccess.com to stay up to date with the content shared across all platforms. And I'll be posting articles about my thoughts, my struggles, and resources to help you thrive in your engineering career. Thank you for watching. Until the next time.